My name is Carl Rappold. I'm a third generation rancher. The ranch has been in the family since 1882. Um, I make a living running cows. Also, I manage the Kratz Brothers uh, Creature Hero Refuge up here at the Puyer. Graze cattle on it and intermingle with the wildlife. Well, here in the front where Grizzly Gulch is, I mean, every wild animal that was here when Lewis and Clark came through in 1805 is still here today. Every um, the moose, the bighorn sheep, the mountain goat, the deer, the elk, the grizzly bears, the black bears, the mountain lions, the wolverines, the wolves, the coyotes, all of these animals that were here at the start of the 1800s are still living here. The only thing that isn't here on the front right now are the wild bison. But other than that, every species of animal is living here and there's hardly any spot in the United States of America that can claim that same thing. Well, the uh, um, bears are starting to get uh, pretty thick in this country up here. Um, on an average, sometimes you'll see them every day for three or four days and five or six bears, different bears each day. There's quite a few bears. Um, they're doing good up here. The sows are raising lots of cubs. They just are going to need more room to expand. The bears are getting populated enough here that uh, the other morning we had um, five of them here in the yard um, on the ranch here. They travel back and forth between Grizzly Gulch and the ranch up and down along the front here. But um, I mean, on any given day, you might see five, six, you might see a dozen. You might see 10 or 12 bears all in one group, which is probably a family unit of grandparents, uh, mothers, daughters, and that sort of thing. So. There are some, uh, some really big bears up here. There's some thousand pound grizzlies that live on the front up here, which is very rare. There's very few places in the state of Montana where there's anything close to that size, but on the Rocky Mountain front up here, they have been weighed in at a thousand pounds, so. Well, these, uh, these big old bears that have been on the ranch here for anywhere from 20 to 30 years, some of them, um, they become just like a brother. You see them all the time, and these big old bears, they don't ever cause any problems. Um, they just kind of go about their own business. Um, these younger bears that are being kicked off nowadays, there's getting to be quite so many of them that they're starting to compete for food, and that starts creating problems for some of the cattle ranchers in the area because they're hungry and a baby calf is easy uh, meal for them. So, um, that's when they get in trouble, but uh, the big old bears, um, they never cause any trouble at all. Um, they just kind of wander around, mind their own business, and um, they're a pleasure to see them. Up here along the front, um, you know, the grizzly bears, nothing new to us. Um, there's always been grizzly bears up here. Even before they went on the endangered species list, they just weren't as thick as they are now. So it's given the ranchers a lot of time to, for trial and error about how to live with the bears and how to get along with them. Like I say, these old these old bears don't. They've grown up around these ranches for enough years that they know that if they stay out of trouble, they've got a home, and so. You know, they're, bears aren't a dumb animal, they're a smart animal. They will take a free meal wherever they can get it, but they also show a lot of respect for people and your property um, versus these young sub-adult bears that haven't really learned their lessons yet and stuff. So, the you know, I guess these old bears, hopefully they keep teaching these young ones um, it's kind of a trade-off. They learn to live with us and we learn to live with them. 
Well, I've had um, several close encounters with these bears uh, when I'm fencing in the brush and on these creek bottoms and stuff, and you will run into them um, right, I mean, face to face. We're talking 10, 15 feet from one of them guys in this thick brush, and um, it makes a hair stand up on the back of your neck when one of them snaps his teeth and lets a beller out of him at you. Last year, I was fixing some fence up there on a hillside, and it was real brushy, running down into a creek bottom. And the snow had broke the fence all down, and um, I went to start stretching the wires, and there was one of these big old boars uh, sleep underneath a pine tree there. And when I started stretching that wire, he come boiling up out from underneath that tree and let a big beller out of him and stood right there and looked at me and we were 18 steps apart and I started backing away from him talking to him he started circling around up above me and finally I got far enough away to where I was able to get to the top of the hill and um, it all turned out good um, I had neither bear spray nor a pistol that day all I had was a pair of fencing pliers so My favorite part of the ranch and the ranching is my dad was born in 1897. He was almost 60 years old when I was born. So the whole time I was growing up, we spent a lot of time together a horseback, riding the ranch, checking on cattle and everything and looking at the wildlife. And I learned an awful lot from him um, because he went from a horse and buggy era to seeing men like land on the moon so he had a wide perspective of things and that's my favorite part of the ranch is of spending the time with my dad and getting him to learn how to how to manage the ranch and how to manage the wildlife and everything else and uh, that's why I continue to do it today and hopefully um, pass it on down to the next generation and the generation after that. With like my ranch um, and grizzly goats, there's a conservation easement on it. So, a hundred years from now, this front will look just exactly like it does today. Um, it will not be subdivided. It will not be changed. It will be a home for ranchers and wildlife.